economics to me is above all a way of thinking, um, a framework for making sense of the world. I fell into economics kind of by accident. I didn't have the chance to study economics when I was at school, but when I was at university I took some economics and econometrics modules and really enjoyed them. And what really interested me was how broad the discipline is. So economics relates everything from business to history, sociology, psychology. I think what I found exciting was that it's a social science so it can have real impact in our everyday lives and in our society. And also the fact that we can use maths and economic models to try and understand the complex world around us. So I wanted to do something out of box and I also knew that economics will give me a number of transferable skills that I can use uh, for my employment in other areas as well. Well something I'm researching at the moment is designing econometric test procedures to real-time monitor bubbles and crashes. So what I'm trying to do in my research is design econometric test procedures which can detect when a bubble's emerged in a market or when that bubble is about to crash. And the idea is that that then gives information to policymakers in governments or in central banks uh, to help them act as quickly as possible. I am an applied microeconomist with a current focus on education economics. So education is so important because people with higher education tend to have higher wages, report better life satisfaction and even have uh, better health. My research is on environmental economics. Uh, this is essentially the interplay between the environment and the economy. Um, given the climate urgency, it's extremely interesting to be working in this area. I'm uh, working in the area of labour economics and uh, I'm uh, evaluating the various policies, uh, labour uh, policies that have been implemented in India, uh, particularly uh, the minimum wage law for domestic workers. I have to see what all impact that the minimum wage law had on the domestic workers' wages and employment in India. My latest research project that I'm working on at the moment um, shines a light on the disability employment gap. So that would be the difference between uh, the employment rates for disabled people and the employment rates for non-disabled people. Economics is very obviously male dominated. However, I've never felt at a disadvantage being female. And since starting studying economics, I've definitely seen a positive change in the gender balance. I think in the early stages of my career, it wasn't always easy to have my voice heard. So I do value and appreciate those who empowered me and others to uh, feel more confident to share ideas and thoughts. Well, as a woman, you uh, face many barriers uh, because just for just being a woman and from the part of the world that I come from, women generally are not very educated and uh, they are mostly uh, sent into, you know, uh, uh, taking care of the family and all. Uh, so many people demotivated me uh, from going into uh, this field, but I still chose to do it because I wanted to represent my gender in this field. So there's no getting away from the fact that economics is a male-dominated discipline at the moment, but things are trending in the right direction. We have plenty of women in senior leadership positions, whether that's in university economic departments or in central banks or in government. The advice I would give to anyone really is that a good mentor makes all the difference. Um, so try to seek out opportunities for mentorship. Go for it and be resilient. Do not be disheartened by any barriers or obstacles that may arise along the way. Economics allows us to drive positive change for the society so they can become part of it. And at the same time, being in the profession, they can be agents of, of change themselves Ultimately, the way of correcting this balance is to have more young, intelligent women study economics. So my advice is to come and join us. Mm -hmm.